Well, welcome back to the third passage in our God Is series. Um, if you are new to this channel, I encourage you to just push the subscribe button. It will give you notifications when new videos are posted. And over the last few weeks, as we've looked at God's greatness and God's glory, it has grown our view of how, how big our God is. And today in Psalm 107, we're going to see that God is good. As always, I encourage you to take some time to read through the passage yourself, a few times familiarize yourself with what's happening in this passage, and note down some repetition that you see, uh, look for what looks like key themes, and I'm going to give just a little bit of uh, things that I've noticed, spend some time to uh, pray through this passage, pray that God would open your eyes to see wonderful things about Him in His Word and pray for those who you're going to be teaching that God would give you um, clarity of thought so that you can teach this passage well to others. One of the key things that we uh, see in this passage is this call to give thanks. And we're going to see that that is one of the, the real key ideas in, in this passage. Psalm 107, um, the whole psalm, is, is governed by verses 1 to 3. So these verses set the scene for the whole psalm. And we're just looking at one of the episodes. There's another three episodes that follow. And then right at the end of the psalm, in uh, Psalm in 107 verse 43, it really caps off the psalm with a call to be wise and consider these things. Reflecting on God's goodness, displayed in his enduring love, which we'll look at, his love endures forever, is something that we should speak of. Uh, we should tell the story of God's goodness seen in our lives. And as we meditate and speak of these things, what this psalm wants us to see that we actually increase in wisdom. But we're just focusing in on the first part of the psalm. Psalm 107 is the first psalm in book 5 of psalms. So the psalms have been divided up into um, five books. And book 5, many of the psalms suggest that the exile is over. A new beginning is dawning. And that's very much the sense of Psalm 107. Uh, we in a new era for God's people. They are post-exile now. And that will help us just understand some of what we see in this passage. So looking at God is good, this psalm starts by saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. And this section ends with speaking about um, the good things that He fills His people with. The focus of the whole psalm is on the Lord. Um, we should be speaking about the Lord. He is the one who redeems. He is the one who gathers. He is the one who the people should cry out to. He delivers. He leads. It's the Lord who we give thanks to for his unfailing love, his wonderful deeds. He satisfies. So it's very clear that the Lord God is the focus of the psalm. And one of the ways that we know that God is good is because his love endures forever. His love is unfailing. Um, that repeated idea throughout the greater section of Psalm 107 just reminds us of God's goodness. God's goodness is seen ultimately in his love. For the people who were originally reading this, uh, they had been redeemed, redeemed from slavery uh, or from exile in Babylon. But God had redeemed them. He had gathered them. He had delivered them. He was leading them, or he had led them to a city where they could settle. And we can see from these opening verses, he gathered from the lands, from the hand of their foe, from east, west, north and south. So they had been uh, dispersed across the, the empire, but God had called them home. 
And with that in mind, it starts by saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. It's a forever love. Now they really did need this reminder, because although they had been gathered and brought back to um, a home where they could settle, life in that home wasn't that easy. You can just go and read uh, the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, and you will see that they had to rebuild their city, they had to rebuild the temple, they had enemies trying to stop them along the way. Life wasn't easy. And so the psalmist here is calling them to remember all the things that they can and should give thanks for. And there are lots of them. In the structure we see um, verse 4 and 5, the problem is kind of spelt out for us. They are wandering in desert wastelands and they don't find a city where they could settle. And then we're told that they are hungry and thirsty and they are ebbing their lives away. This word um, lives is, the ESV translates it, their souls fainted within them. Um, it holds the idea of being discouraged. So this is a deep, soul deep hunger and thirst. Yes, many of them would have been physically hungry and thirsty, but this is a deeper thing than that. They are uh, wandering, restlessly wandering in these wastelands, wondering when God was going to sort things out. And then we get this wonderful word um, in verse 6, then. And this kind of transitions us into seeing the solution here in verse 6 and 7, and then the response in verse 8 and 9. Then they cried out. And they cried out to the right place. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them. Uh, this is a picture word. This word delivered um, in the Hebrew. It's a picture word that holds the, the idea of taking the prey out of an animal's mouth. So it's a very graphic picture of deliverance. But if you were the person who was delivered from the mouth of a wild animal, you would be a person who gives thanks. And that's what the psalmist is reminding. Then they cried out to the Lord and he delivered them. God did what he, he promised he would do for his people. He delivered them from their distress. And not only did he save them, delivering them, he led them to a city where they could settle. So they were looking for a city where they could settle. And we see here that God did exactly that. He, he led them by a straight way to a place where they could settle. And then the last few verses says that he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry. Now that's also an idea we've seen already in this psalm. Uh, they were hungry and thirsty, and here the hungry and thirsty are satisfied. They're filled with good things from their good God. So here there was a deep soul dissatisfaction. They were feeling discouraged. By the end, they've been satisfied by their good God who has filled them with good things. And twice we're told that his love endures forever. His love is unfailing. And this should cause them to give thanks. Because it says for here. You've got to ask why is the for there? Give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds to mankind. For. This is why we give thanks. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry. Again, this is um, has the idea of satisfies the, the longing soul, which links back with verse 5. They, their souls fainted within them, and here he satisfies the longing soul, and the hungry soul is filled with good things. So this is promising a, a soul-deep satisfaction, 
But here's what I want you to see is key. We're told twice to give thanks. And this is actually a plea. Oh, that they would give thanks. They were in a situation that was difficult. And the psalmist is saying, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. And the idea behind that telling their story is that they should reflect on where they were, what they did in response, and how God responded. And as they reflected on that story, it would remind them of all the things that they had to give thanks for. God is very, very good. His love endures forever. Now for us, it's important for us to uh, grab hold of this because this is true for us too. We should be a people who are characterized by thankfulness. And thankfulness is a choice. In Romans 1, Paul speaks about being unthankful as a root of unbelief. While in Colossians 3, Paul speaks about how the church should be characterized by thankfulness. Thankfulness should be a characteristic that is absolutely natural for us as God's people. And it only will be natural for us when we actually take the time to remember God's goodness and his love, that he's redeemed us in Jesus ultimately, that he's gathered us from all over the world to be a part of his people, that he's delivered us from, not out of the mouth of a lion, but out of something worse. He's delivered us from sin and death. He continues to lead us by his spirit. He has satisfied our longing souls. We have so many reasons to give thanks. God has given us absolutely everything we need to know him and to serve him. Ultimately, that has been given to us in our Lord Jesus. And so we, of all people, should be those who give thanks to the Lord, for He is good and His love endures forever. And as we reflect on this and tell our story, it will develop into a habit for us that thankfulness will become something that just naturally flows out of us. So I pray for all of you as you dig in further that thankfulness will indeed be something that is absolutely natural to you, normal to you. And as you teach this passage to others, be praying that increasingly we will be a people who are thankful to the Lord for who he is and for what he's done. Well, God bless as you dig in further and as you teach this to others.